Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is Emad and here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 45. This episode is very special because it includes tons of new exciting features that you shouldn't miss out and that's why the video is longer than expected. So I'm going to show you everything new in Google Apps but before starting let me remind you to subscribe to the channel to get notified about my upcoming videos and now let's jump in. I will start with the most exciting feature in this episode which is Google Lens multi-search support. This feature not only gonna let you search for products using your camera, but you will also be able to ask more questions about these photos to narrow down the results and get exactly what you are looking for. And as an example, here I have an Xbox controller plus my Pixel Buds. And let's say I want the white color from this Xbox controller. All I need to do is to start Google Lens, tap on search, and then swipe up to expand the results. And as you see here, we have a pill shape uh, add to your search uh, text field. By tapping on it, it will allow you to enter the text or the modifications to your search. In this case, I want the white color. Then I'm gonna hit search. As you see, now I'm getting the results for the white color. And the same applies to the pixel buds. Let's say I want to get a protective case for this pixel buds. So I'm gonna do the search first. Okay, and then add to the uh, description, uh, I want a protective case and hit search. As you see, now I'm getting the protective cases that I can buy for my Pixel Buds. This new Google Lens feature is currently in beta and it only works in the US. And if you are wondering how I got it on my Pixel 6 Pro, I simply connected my phone to a VPN and I made sure I'm connected to a server in the US. After waiting for a couple of days, I found the feature activated on the phone. Keep in mind that this feature has endless number of scenarios and it works with anything, not just the electronics as I showed you in this video. So for example, you can point it towards your coffee table or maybe address and check if they have different colors online. You can point it towards the plant and search about the care instructions for this specific plant and so on and so forth. So it requires further testing for me to see how accurate it works and I will keep you updated about my findings. One more thing worth mentioning, the feature disappears once I disconnect the VPN and that's expected because I'm not based in the US, so you need to keep that in mind. Another new feature in Google Lens is the new translate shortcut in the screenshots overlay menu. This feature is only exclusive to Pixel phones, so let me show you an example here. Let's say you took a screenshot that includes text in different language like this you will see a new option here called translate with the lens icon next to it. Tapping on it will immediately open Google Lens and show you the translated text, which is very convenient. I already talked about this feature in my previous video about the April 2022 security batch for Pixel devices, but because the feature is not related to the update, I decided to include it here as well. Next, Google Photos. And now we got a redesigned the screenshots shortcut on the home page. First, the thumbnail is now on the left side and we got a new X button to dismiss the card instead of swiping it away like before. And here's another screenshot for the old design. As you see, we used to have a glyph icon, which is now the thumbnail and the X button is filling the empty space right here. And previously to dismiss this shortcut, all you need to do is to swipe it away. But now the X button will make it less likely to do this by accident. Next, YouTube. And now we have a new option under the description card called show transcript. As per the description, it says follow along using the transcript and it has an auto sync feature. So it highlights the currently spoken text. And as an example, here's one of the videos that I'm gonna play and then tap on show transcript. As you see, the time codes are here on the left and the spoken text is currently highlighted. You can continue, see the transcript in landscape mode as well. And you can access it by opening your description card, scroll down, show transcript to follow along with the video. Change number two is the ability to share YouTube videos via Snapchat. As you see here, it appears in the share sheet. Tapping on it will automatically create a link and add it to your Snapchat. Change number three and the last one is the faster link to TV process. Let's say you want to sign in with the same Google account on your smart TV and both devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. And instead of typing any codes to complete the process, all you need to do is to tap on the cast icon, choose your smart TV, and then you will get a screen similar to this one with a connect button. Tapping on it will sign in for you, which will make the process a lot more seamless and easier to do. 
Next, YouTube Music. And the only change I'm going to show you is in the home page. When you scroll all the way down, you will find three new shortcuts under a heading called Explore. One will take you to the new releases, one for charts, and the last one for modes and genres. The same thing can be accessed from the Explore tab. These are the same shortcuts, but Google is making it easier for you to access the same thing from the home page. Next, Google Home app. And the first change is the redesigned home screen. As you see, the on and off buttons are now replaced with tiles, and each tile will allow you to turn the lights on or off, which is the most basic action. And you can also now drag your finger over the tile to change the brightness of your lights, like this. And that's exactly the same behavior and design of the device control tiles, as you see here. You can also drag your finger here on top of the lights to change the brightness. Uh, and that's exactly the case now inside the home app. But the only difference, you are not getting a haptic feedback while changing the brightness inside the app. The other thing that also matches the device control styles is the tap and hold action. As you see, I'm getting exactly the same page as if I tapped and hold on a tile inside the device controls like this. And finally, the icons in each tile looks different. So for example, the smart lights are no longer using the bulb and they are using this new icon instead. Also Chromecast has a different icon and so on and so forth. The second change is under the events feed and now it's called recent events instead of priority events like before. And you will immediately notice that the cards are now different. First, they have a centered icon and you will see the date and time on the top left corner. Here you also have a new ellipsis button. Tapping on it will allow you to do certain actions like go to the history, which will take you right away to the full history of events you have. And the other thing you can do is to hide the home and the away routine events if you don't want to see it anymore under this page. You can also edit the routine directly from here. And at the top you have a button that also takes you to the history page. From the history page, you can do certain actions like uh, choose a specific period of time to see the events for it. And also you have some filters here uh, to choose between service linking, permission changed, data accessed or presence events. And you can show the results based on your filters like this. So when you give it some time, it will only show you the filtered events here. And that's how it looks now. Change number three and the last one in the home app is under settings and then privacy. Now you will see a different page with a prominent blue bar at the top that didn't exist before. And the page has a new title here called the privacy settings at home. After that, you will see different options compared to the previous version, like a shortcut for the present sensing feature. The remove saved Wi-Fi and home addresses are now combined together under one menu. After that, you have your data section that includes home activity and your data in the assistant, and both will take you to the web page in your Google account to check your history. And finally, you have a learn more section with more articles if you want to know more. Next, Google app. And it got plenty of new features after connecting my phone to a VPN in the US. And the first one is the price tracking. Let's say you are interested in a specific product. All you need to do is to search for it in Google app like this, and then go to shopping. Once the results appear, scroll down and activate this flag next to the product. As you see here, it added the product to a collection called the products I like that you can locate under collections here. It's called the products I like. Then tap on the product you are interested in. Wait for a few seconds. And as you see here, I have the saved flag. But if I removed this flag and then added it again, now I'm getting a new toggle called tracking price. And as per the description, it says here, get notified when the price drops, which, me which means you will not be notified when the price goes higher. You will only be notified when it goes down. And when you activate it for the first time, you will get this toast notification confirming that the product has been added to the price tracking list. Tracking a product that way doesn't only show you updates about the price drops, but you will get much more information when you go back to the collections page. When I scroll down, there is a section called shopping and as per the description, you can track products to get updates about price drops and more. Under the same section, you will find something called keep researching. This section will automatically collect all your recent activities and classify them into different categories based on the product types. So for example, I have computers and accessories and that includes the external hard drives I searched for. 
As you see here when I open it, first I have an update about the price drop for a hard disk similar to the one I'm searching for. Here I have all my recent activity, suggested articles, uh, then I have similar products and recently viewed products and when I keep scrolling I have people also ask, suggested videos and finally related searches. When I go back and if there are any updates waiting for me you will see this blue text. Once I go inside here are all the updates waiting for me and when I go back the text disappeared. You can also remove any of these products from your research uh, section and here it says hide this suggestion, manage your search history or send feedback. So when you go uh, tap on manage search history it will take you to your my activity page to delete any search history you want and so on and so forth. Beside all these amazing tracking features that you only get with the US version, but you will also get a totally different collection page compared to the other versions. So here's how my collections page looks like before connecting to a VPN in the US. As you see, it looks like a list without any extra information like this one. First, you will get something called the quick access, which will show you your recent searches. Then you have shows and movies from here. You can check your recent searches and also add movies to your watch list and here you have a shortcut to go to your watch list and to check more information about your recent activity based on your recent activity what to watch and so on and so forth uh, then you have one for recipes the uh, other one called collection which will show you your collections then you have shopping which is the one i already showed you and finally we have restaurants so this is how the US version looks like and I believe it looks much better and I hope Google will roll out these new changes to other countries soon. Next, Gboard. And now when you try to translate text in Google Translate, the keyboard language will automatically match the language you are translating from. So for example, here I'm translating from English to Arabic and that's why Gboard is in English. But once I swap languages, it's now in Arabic without me doing anything, which will make it easier for you. This change could also be related to Google Translate, so you can see its version now on the screen. One more thing I noticed in Google Translate is the ability to use handwriting. And as you see here at the top right corner, I have this button that looks like a pen. I've never seen it before so please let me know in the comments if it's a new or old feature but let me show you how it works anyways. Tapping on the button will give you this white space to start using hand writing and I'm gonna type a very simple Arabic word. Give it a few seconds and now I'm getting the translation. Here I have the backspace, the space and also the option to undo and when I tap on this arrow at the bottom right corner it will minimize the handwriting and show me more information about the word. Now let me show you some Google Pixel exclusive features that are not related to any software update but Google pushed after April 2022 security batch. The first one is the battery percentage for your Bluetooth connected devices in the at a glance widget and as you see the name of the device and the battery percentage are showing. The same thing will apply to the always on display and also the lock screen. To activate the feature, tap and hold on at a glance, customize, tap the gear icon and you will see a switch here called connected devices and once you activate it, you should see this information. But this feature seems to be buggy for now as the information disappears on its own without me doing anything. But if I try to disconnect and reconnect my Bluetooth device, it appears again immediately. So I'm not sure if Google will push an update for this or this is how it works by design. The second new feature is also in the at a glance widget. You will see a new toggle here called safety check and the description says safety check countdown from the personal safety app. So if you have any countdown running in the safety app, you should see it here in the at a glance widget. Last but not least, Snapchat on Pixel 6 models now supports Night Sight and now you will see this new crescent icon. Tapping on it will activate the feature. This should be part of March feature drop but I didn't see it on my phone up until April. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to show you today. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any change that I didn't mention before to include in my future videos. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.